Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. I decided to tackle an 1890s project that I had been thinking about for a little while. For that, I needed new undergarments. I probably could have gotten away with the early Edwardian corset I made last summer, or my old mid-Victorian corset, but I didn't want to. Instead, I decided to make a new one. My main inspiration was this excellent corset found on Pinterest. I had only seen this photo, but revisiting it for this video, I actually found a few more. This was mostly just an aesthetic influence, with the colour scheme and embroidery, as the corset design itself is quite different. For this corset, I used the book Stays in Corsets by Mandy Bergden to draft my pattern. It had exactly the style of 1890s corset I wanted. I think I had used this book to draft a different corset, but I can't remember which. I struggled with the mock-up as it was way too big. I think I took it in by around 4 inches or so. I don't have any of that mock-up process in this video, but I constantly post mock-ups on my Instagram stories. I wish I had taken a before and after of the corset pattern, but here is the after. My materials included cotton couture and some leftover off-white silk I had used for my Eowyn cosplay. I also got this lovely embroidery silk thread in ray from Devere Yarns. My first step was to trace the pattern onto my couture, being really careful with the grain lines. I used the waistline on the pattern to help me. I then added a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and marked the waistline on all pieces. I used a friction pen for this which disappears with heat. I then cut the pieces out. I like using my rotary cutter for this, as cutting two layers of couture can be quite tough on your hands. I used my couture pieces to cut out the silk, as they already had seam allowances. My next step was to baste the layers together. The silk is interlined with couture, so I need to baste them together. I have always gotten better results basting corset layers together by hand rather than by machine. I used a thin needle and cotton thread to try and keep any noticeable damage on the silk layer low. I wanted to try a technique called roll pinning, but I forgot to cut the silk a little larger than the couture, so I'm just basting as normal. I did three lines of basting on every piece, always from the top downwards. I usually only do two rows, but the difference was noticeably better with the third row. This took a while, and couture is rather annoying to sew through, as it is so densely woven.
Once that was all done, I filled my bobbins, yes, plural, to tackle the next step, cording. There is cording on two front panels and the side panel. At this point, I realized I had already made a mistake. <laughs> yep, we're five minutes into this video and I've already got a mistake. When cording, it is normal for the top layer of fabric, in this case the silk, to shrink. So you should always cut this a bit larger. I found my silk actually shrunk by a few inches in some cases. Before starting, I pinned my cotille pieces to scraps of silk and traced the shape of the cotille onto the silk. My preferred way is to sew a line of stitches, butt up the cord to it, and sew again with a zipper foot. I find this effect preferable to a cording foot. However, it is very time consuming, but we can't win them all. I marked on my silk where I wanted the cording to start and end. I sewed one row of stitches, then placed the cord and pressed it tight with my fingernail, then sewed again. End repeat. I then trimmed all the threads at thread ends. It's not the most even cording in the world, but I love it. The side panels took the longest, as they are like 90% cording. I think each panel took me 3 hours, but they were so satisfying. Now that my corset pieces were prepped, I moved on to the busk. The busk sections consist of two layers of cotille and one of silk. The silk is basted onto one layer of cotille and then sewn to the other layer, so I will sandwich the busk within it. My corset busk was actually an inch or so too short for this design, but I couldn't afford to get a new one, so I went with it. I pinned one panel of the interlined silk to one of cotille, right sides together, and marked the teeth of the busk. I then sewed this seam by machine, stopping and skipping over teeth markings, leaving gaps. The other side of the busk is just a straight seam. These seams are pressed open. I also marked the raised bits of the busk onto the corresponding piece and perforated them so I could work with the embroidery design around the holes. I moved on to embroidering it. I made a cute little design based on the photo I showed earlier. I'm not good at drawing or freehanding, so with an old needle I made little perforations on the design and then used a friction pen to transfer them onto the busk pieces. I played connect the dots and then embroidered over it with a short stem stitch. This took forever, as embroidering cotille is really hard on the hands, and I had to do very short stitches so it went nicely around the curves.
Once that was all done, I went back to installing the busk. The busk sides are put into position, the teeth side into the gap and the bumps into the small holes I made earlier. I used the clips to keep it in place and based it around it. I then top stitched it by machine, keeping as close to the busk as possible. I used a zipper foot for this, but the curved busk makes this quite tricky. I went so slow with this, the video is actually 500 times faster than reality. I finished the centre back simply by turning the seam allowance inwards and sewing it down by hand. I'm not happy with this, it's the only visible raw edge on the corset even if it's on the inside. I think in the future I'll cover it with twill tape or something. The rest of the construction is very straightforward, just pin the pieces together, baste and sew by machine. I always construct corsets in two steps, the front and the back, leaving the side seam to last and the busk is also one of the last things to go on. It makes it easy to manoeuvre the corset, to iron and to finish the seams. I pressed all the seams and clipped them, particularly in the curves and waist. To finish the seams, I trimmed one side back and then folded the longer seam allowance under and over, encasing the other seam. Sort of like a flat felt fel seam. This is then sewn down by machine. In my other corset, I went to the effort of basting this, but for this I didn't bother, and just treated my machine with prayers and respect. Once that was done, and still without sewing up the side seam, I marked the bones onto the corset pieces, I pinned the twill tape on and basted it into place, then sewing my, by machine to make the bone channels.
Once these were all done, I sewed the bust to the front panels and did the side seam, finishing the seams as before. For the boning, I used a combination of synthetic whalebone and flat steel. I only used flat steel on either side of the eyelet section at the back. The rest is all synthetic. For the flat steel, I cut the needed lengths and used an emery board to file the edges, then covering them with zinc tape. For the whalebone, I just filed them around. I used the bones I had already cut for my mock-up. I had numbered them with a sharpie so this was very easy. They were all inserted into place. To finish the top and bottom edge, I made some tape from my silk scraps. This isn't on the bias because I didn't have enough fabric, but it worked well anyway. I pinned it to the right side of the corset and sewed it by machine with a half an inch seam allowance. This was then ironed up and over and hand sewn into place on the inside of the corset. I set in the eyelets at the back using a basic kit in the hammer from Amazon. However, I did make some of these holes too big as some of the eyelets later were loose. So at the moment I am sewing over the eyelets with some more of the orange silk thread. My last step was embellishing it because the embroidery at the front was not enough. I did some simple flossing in a crisscross design for every bone in the corset. I 
I used a sewing gauge to make sure my stitches were the same size. I also used the two strands of thread at the same time to make it stand out more. Was this enough? No! So I added some embroidery to the front of the cording. I did two little arches of thread, then brought my needle up between them and collected one arch from either side and drew them taut, making a diamond shape. It is a little hard to see in this footage, but I have a photo step by step on my Instagram. I also did some triangles over the horizontal bones on the side panel. At this point I realised I had forgotten about the waist tape. I hastily added it on. The waist tape is just a bit of twill tape hand sewn to every seam. It is actually meant to be stuck in the busk seam to help ease the strain off the seams at the waist, but I wasn't undoing any seams at this point. Was this enough? No. In my head from the beginning, I had this diamond embroidery over the curtains stuck in my head. So the only natural decision was to murder my fingers into the hole of the side panel. Of course. Three days later, the corset was done. I actually really love this. It is my favourite corset. I think it's really pretty and I love the effort I put into it. The pattern actually worked out well and it gives me a good shape. Thank you for watching.